very much. You're all welcome to Impact 2022. I want to thank God for this wonderful Global Impact Program. And I also thank the visionary of this program, Pastor Dr. W.F. Komoi. I want to thank the organizers for inviting us to speak at this time. I will be speaking with Dr. Sam Jolayemi and Mr. Layo Adebayo from Australia. And at this time, we are talking about personal branding. Personal branding. The word branding is very common to organizations, companies, to products, or those who render uh, specific services. A brand is a feature or sets of features that distinguishes one organization from another. Uh, but in today's world, uh, which has become like a global space, uh, we talk about personal branding. And personal branding is what comes first, what comes to people's mind first when they see you or when they see your digital uh, footprints. When we talk about digital footprints, those are the footprints you make when you post something online, when you post a comment, when you reply to a comment, when you react to a comment, or when you are even tagged in a post. You are actually creating a personal brand. You are leaving digital footprints. We end up creating your personal brand. And your personal brand reveals your perspective. It also reveals your core values. It is important to know that your personal brand can either make you or can mar you. So what you put on the internet has become so important that your online projection has become a tool to assess your offline proficiency. Your online profile is a big tool right now to assess your offline proficiency. If you want to look for a job now, once you apply for that job, one of the things they do is that they go online and they check your social media handles to see if you have a good online reputation or online profile. So it is very important you create um, a, a formidable, a, a reputable personal brand online. There is this boy named Farouk. Farouk is a graphic designer. And he decided to design a logo for a mobile uh, complaint. That is mobile vehicles complaint. And he tagged the complaint. Uh, and he said, I'm proposing this logo for your complaint. He did that on Twitter. That post was shared many times until it got the attention of the complaint. And because of the way he branded the logo and he branded himself, he actually had the opportunity to talk to the owner of the complaint. So that is the power of personal branding. On the other hand, um, there was this lady in the United States who got a job with NASA. NASA is National Aeronautics and Space Administration. She was offered an internship. But you know what happened? She got so excited, went on Twitter, and posted that she got this internship, but with a bad language. She used coarse words, as we will say here. And then that got the attention of a top member of the council, who tried to correct her on Twitter and said, be careful of your language. But because she did not know who that person was, she replied that person with even a worse language, a worse language, a worse curse word. Do you know what happened? She lost her internship. She lost her job. Why? Because she was not able to brand herself well. So you see, your personal branding can either make you or mar you. We cannot ignore the fact that there are some challenges to our personal branding. Yes. I will just mention them quickly. We have some psychosocial problems, which has to deal with the way you think about yourself. So your mental image of yourself can affect how you brand yourself. Or it can be 
your, the, the, the image, the mental image of how other people see you can affect how you brand yourself. We also have genetic inheritance, genetic makeup, the way you are built. Some people are introverts, others are extroverts. And yes, that can affect the way you brand yourself. Sometimes it could be environmental factors. For example, um, a lot of people brand themselves based on their background. So they allow the culture to affect their personal branding. It's one of those challenges that affects the way we brand ourselves. The way we grew up, the community in where we grew up, the people we interacted with while growing up, that can affect our personal branding. Or maybe economic hardship. You know, with COVID cases rising presently, or depression on the rise, or suicide, or poverty, unemployment. Sometimes we take these things and attach them to our brand, even as we post on social media, and that really affects our personal branding. But at this time, we are going to look at seven ways to build a reputable brand. How can you build a reputable brand? One, you have to be clean. Can you tell somebody, be clean? Look at your neighbor and say, be clean. When we say be clean, you have to be sure you have a clean reputation. You want to avoid any form of scandal. You want to have clean records. Uh, you want to go back to your timeline, go back to your feed on the media or online, and be sure that there is nothing there that is not in alignment or in correlation to where God wants to take you to. So you go back there and clean up anything in the past that is not aligning to your purpose in life. So make sure you have clean reputation, clean records. Make sure you have clean results. When you present your results outside there, avoid manipulating your results. Make sure you have clean relationship. Avoid relationships that can implicate your destiny. Avoid relationships that can implicate your destiny. Uncleanness will always catch up with you, even if you don't catch up with it. Uncleanness will always catch up with you, if you don't catch up with it. We have many mighty men, big men, great men that are falling today because they did not do a thorough cleaning of their past. And now it is catching up with them. Another thing on cleanliness we do is which will make you drive recklessly. You will have an abnormal drive in life. Over here and in many parts of the world, when a driver drives recklessly, a policeman, a cop, stops that driver. And one of the things they check is to be sure that the blood is clean of alcohol or drugs. Because when you are not clean, you have the tendency to drive recklessly you have an abnormal drive in life so number one be clean number two be consistent consistency is what differentiates a great man from a normal man greatness is built by consistently doing ordinary things in extraordinary ways somebody said that greatness is built by consistently doing ordinary things in extraordinary ways. So as you build your personal branding online, are you consistent? Is your message consistent? Is your mission consistent? Your manner, is it consistent? You have to be very sure. Do you, what do you post? Do you post gospel today and tomorrow you post garbage? Do you post motivational talks today and tomorrow you are murmuring about the country? You have to be consistent. Avoid controversies. Avoid things, uh, rumors that have not been checked. You know, one thing you need to tell yourself, and I want you to tell your neighbor this. Tell your neighbor, you don't have to be part of every discussion online. Tell your neighbor that. Say it again. You don't have to be part of every discussion online. There are some things you can be quiet and because you want to be consistent with your brand. So, number two, be consistent. Number three, be competent. Competency is the ability to do something successfully and efficiently. 
So we have many young people who know how to do things, but they don't know how to do it efficiently. And unfortunately, many young people are looking for connections without competence. So they are trying to connect with people of high regard, and they don't have regard for the work that they do. It is good to network with people that have good net worth, but make sure that you have a net full of good works. It is good with people who have good net worth. But make sure you have a net full of good works. You have to be competent in what you are doing. Number four, you have to be credible. That means you are authentic and real as you build your personal brand. Don't put a false image of yourself online. A lot of people online are putting a false image fake image of who they are. You know what? Fake is never sustainable. Fake is never sustainable. So make sure you are not fake. Make sure you are not fake. The truth cannot be hidden for too long. So make sure you are yourself and make sure you are unique. Emmanuel Unduka, that is the young man that made some news on LinkedIn recently. You see, he branded himself like his role model. His role model is actually the chairman of the Els Holding, the chairman of the United Bank of Africa. Well, it was himself. He didn't have the red socks. You can see on the picture on the right. He didn't have the red socks, and he didn't have the expensive bags, because that, those were the signature of his role model. And when he was asked on the media, on LinkedIn, why don't you have your red socks and your expensive bag? This is what he said. He said, I believe the red socks are connected to his brand. And in the long run, I will have my own legacy and finally secure the bag. And he actually secured the bag. You know what happened? After many days and weeks, he was contacted by his role model the chairman of Els Odin, chairman of the United Bank of Africa. And that role model now became his real mentor. You see, because he branded himself well, but he was unique in branding himself. He was authentic and he was real. So as you brand yourself online, make sure you are credible. Be credible. Number five, be conscious. Be conscious of the time and be conscious of the people. Be conscious of the time in which we live, the events going on around you. Remember that your audience are your followers. Your followers, your fans, those who like your post are your audience. So be conscious, be sensitive to your audience. At the same time, be sensitive to the people. You know, we live in a generation where uh, we disagree without knowing how to respect people. So you see online, a lot of people write, with all due respect. They start the sentence with, with all due respect. But everything that comes after that first phrase has no respect. That is not the way it should be. Yeah, we can disagree. We should learn to disagree with respect. It's a skill that we all need to learn in this generation. Because you don't know where you're going to be tomorrow. You'll be in high places. And I know with this program, the Lord is taking us to high places. And you will be in some places where you will disagree with policies and you will disagree with strategies. But you need to learn how to do it without disrespecting the person bringing the policy. So be conscious of the times and be conscious of the people. Number six, be committed to excellence. Excellence is the quality of being extremely good or outstanding. Excellence is the opposite of mediocrity. Average is the enemy of excellence. So if you want to be excellent, always think about, or always think about going above the average because average is the enemy of excellence. Be committed to excellence in everything that you do. Pay attention to details. Pay attention to details. Detailing is what makes you shine. Detailing is what makes you shine. You know, 
Um, and as you think about excellence, also remember that your idea of excellence is only based on where you've been. So your idea of excellence is based on your exposure. We can see a walk together. Why some people are clapping for that walk, some people are crying for that walk. Do you know why? Because different people have different level of excellence. Your excellence is based on your exposure. So if you want to really reach that standard of excellence, you need to expose yourself to books, expose yourself to materials, videos that can help you in your field or help your personal brand. Expose yourself to portfolios of people that have worked in your area or those you aspire to be. And so that you can have a good picture of what excellence is because the standard of excellence is based on your exposure. So make sure that you are exposed to the right level or standard of excellence. Number seven, and this is the last, you have to be Christ-centered. Yes, we want to build a personal brand, but you need to remember that we are ambassadors of Christ. We belong to a different breed. We are a brand new breed of believers. We have a unique DNA. For we are partakers of his divine nature, DNA. So the fiber optic of our message is grace. We speak light in darkness. We speak peace in chaos. We speak hope in uncertainty. We are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Even though we belong to a different generation, yet we speak the same revelation. Why? Because Jesus is the Son of God. And upon this rock we build the church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against this. So as you build your personal brand, remember that you represent Christ. And as you do this, I believe we will all have wonderful and great personal brands. Thank you so much. Now I hand over to Dr. Jolayemi and Mr. Lyle to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together for our guest speaker. Our Is that the best you can do from the Alpha location? Praise the Lord. It may interest you to know that Dr. Victor Chuku, some years ago, was among our youth Central Youth Choir here in Lagos. This, as I read to you before, at the age of seven, he knew the Lord. And even though he has relocated over the United States of America, he is still standing as a child of God. And is uh, involved in various aspects of the work for the young adults, now a co-regional youth pastor. Let's put our hands together again for Dr. Victor Chuku. He has, he has presented a very good, good presentation on personal branding. Now we want to have questions from the audience. So if you have any question to ask the guest speaker, you can come out of the audience to my front here so that you can ask your questions. As you are making your way to the, to the front of where you are, I need to also inform you that I to have opportunity to ask their question. So if you have a guest speaker, Quickly make your way to the front of the place where you are seated so that the technical crew might to ask your question. Can you show by raising your hand? Step out and ask your question. God bless you. All those who are listening online, you also have the opportunity to ask your question. Kindly write them out. Our technical crew will 
uh, have the questions, and then you have also get answer for Victor Chuko, the guest uh, speaker. Yes, can I have the person in wine top? Wine top, yes. Okay, um, good evening, sir. Um, my question is this. Um, concerning the seven steps in building a reputable brand, it said something about be clean in your records and results and also your relationships. Now, and when he was explaining that, he said we should always be, okay, wait. Then he said we should be credible, sorry. We should be credible, we should be authentic and real. Now, in a world of cyber security, so many informations out online, is it very ideal we keeping our informations out? It's not about we lying about what we keep online, but is it really ideal we keeping out our informations, everything about ourselves here, to be truthful, knowing fully well that as we have good followers, we also have bad followers who follow our pages online and likes. Is it very ideal we been keeping real everything out about ourselves online, or we should also be discreet about the things we keep online? Thank, Thank you very you. much. Let me tell the other that when you have want to ask your question, kindly go straight to your question because of time. Can I have the lady, the only lady there, to ask, and then uh, we'll take one more person and we'll have Victor to answer our question. Yes, the young lady, please. My question still is on being credible. You talked about being real and being yourself. I want to ask, you see um, maybe, okay, according to your own line of um, of, let me say, of professionalism. You see someone else's work that you like, but you're not the one that do the work. Now, can you use that person's work? Maybe you don't have the, you don't have the opportunity of contacting the person that, okay, I want to use your work as an advertisement, but you can do it, it's what you can do. You only want to use it as an advertisement. Can you use the person's work to advertise your own business? Thank you. Can I have the young man in white? Then we'll return to Victor to provide answers to this. Please go straight to your question. Good evening, sir. Um, my question has to do with uh, personal rebranding. Um, I want to ask concerning young people. After you have um, credited yourself on the state that uh, you want to be rebranded and uh, you take away yourself on this state of mediocrity and you discover that along the line in life, maybe you're looking for a help on how to be um, rebranded through someone, and you cannot find the help. And one of these things is that I want to come out from mediocrity to come to a, an, a, a credible situation in life or a state in life. So when such an event or state has not come to take place in the life of a young man or a youth, uh, and that youth is still maintaining that kind of fear of major. What is what can one do about it, sir? Thank you very much. Victor, over to you. Can you be real? And how to what extent can you be real? The thing is, being real is about looking inwards. We are all born with potentials. We are all born uniquely. In fact, our fingerprints are unique. There is no other person that has your fingerprint. So that is how unique you are. We have billions of people in this world, but with unique fingerprints. So what you want to think or what you want to look at is, look inwards. What do I have that can help me brand myself well? Do I have potential? And yes, you have. You just need to look inwards. Look at you. How am I unique from my siblings, even? How am I unique from my friends? How am I unique for, from my society? What is that thing that can make me stand differently? And when you figure out that, you use that as your picture. You bring that out. You find it. You stir up that part of your life, and you come out unique. Now, coming out real doesn't mean that you put everything out there. No. You put those things there that can give you a reputable brand. Remember what I said? So you don't bring out all your records, even the ones that are bad. Clean up your past record. Clean up the bad records and only project those things that can take you to the next level. The second question about using other people's work. Over here, it's a very big deal if you use other people's work without 
um, putting their names on it. So I will not advise you to do that. Yeah, we can use other people's work, but make sure you acknowledge them. We see that a lot on Facebook, and I see a lot of people complaining. Somebody copied my post and did not even mention my name. Somebody copied my picture, and yeah, that is not very good. Let them know you as people, as you build your personal brand. You can use other people's work, but make sure you mention their name, acknowledge them. In fact, you can put their name first before you start um, showing the work. And you have the right to embellish anybody's work. Even as we write papers, those in research know. You can copy and um, um, do research, but you must mention the name of the original author or the one that did the work. The last question, and I will give other people, I have other presenters online that um, answer the questions. I'm talking about mediocrity. You have to look for somebody in your field you can look up to. Well, we call it like a mentor. And you can do that. That is where you, uh, you need hard work, your personal work. Look around you in the church, in the society. Who, what do you want to be like? And who around you or who in the society or in the church has gone there or achieved that? then you will use that of standard as your standard of excellence, okay? And like I said, read books. Um, what videos that can help you? Go to other people's portfolio. Now we have a lot of materials online. So that can help you to know what the standard of excellence is. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. Let's put our hands together, for, hand together for, Victor. Now we go online now we go to take more questions. Thereafter, he is co-presenters uh, in addressing those questions, online questions now. A couple of questions come in online. We begin with some we have uh, the YouTube. This one is from Praise Baturi. He says, how do you stop peer pressure from changing your personal brand? Another one, all the way from Ghana. He says, please, how can I be Christ? And this one from Theresa Abutu says, how can you balance not talking too much and talking right, mainly on social media? From Facebook, we have a lot of questions. We'll take a few of them. Duoma, um, okay, uh, Facebook, a couple of questions rolling in. This one from Pende, how do we build a personal work brand? They're also responsible to use our social media handles for church publicities and regular events. And then um, this one says, copying someone's work without giving them credit is called plagiarism. I guess that's just a comment. This one says, my question um, are posts on social media. Can you delete all your posts you ever made, good or bad posts? Because it says that there are regrets for young, some young people some for young things people. they've done. Those are the few we can take for time's sake take now. For time Thank, sake you. Now. Thank you. Thank you. I'll turn over, I'll I'll turn over the mic to Dr. Sam Jolayemi and Mr. Omolayo Adebayo to provide answers to this question one after the other. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please go ahead. Praise the Lord. My name is Sam Jola Yemi. I'm based in Brisbane and Melbourne in, um, in Australia. I'm a child, adolescent, and family psychiatrist. I thank uh, Dr. Victor Chuku for the great job he has done, and I praise the Lord for the good work that he's doing through him and others like him in the church and globally. The, I couldn't hear quite a few of the questions, but I caught enough for me to realize that moderation, as the word of God suggests, is always a good guide. Be moderate, let your moderation be known to everybody, everybody. Online, in life, in everything we do, 
talking about putting ourselves out there as young people, even though we know the the is a jungle out there, and the social media platforms have already provided an outlet for a lot of people in the world with abnormal personalities and dangerous intentions. A lot of people have lost their life and have been, they've been seriously hurt by their activities on the internet. We are aware of this. And we as children of God, we should not be naive. So moderation is a very key thing. Now, other parts of the question that I was able to catch include your integrity. You know, you cannot sell what you do not have. If you do not have integrity, it is difficult for you to gain the trust of other people. It means that you yourself must have a stable personality and a stable emotional development. Looking at children today and young people, lots of things are happening in their lives. Many things that influence our personality development, including your genetic inheritance, exposure to environment, environmental factors. Unfortunately, nobody has any power to control what they've inherited from their parents or even the environmental impact that has affected their emotional and personality development. One thing I see that is defining and is influencing people's development today is the amount of trauma that young people go through all over the world. Domestic violence parental discord, a lot of fights at home, separation, chronic tension, and dysfunctional home background that leads to children not having the optimal environment to develop and thereby leading to all sorts of problems. And we see a rise in the suicide rate of youth, depression, unhappiness, and a lot of unholy influences from so-called influencers and other people in their lives. In other parts of the country, where even when the family values are still being respected, the rate of divorce is not as great, but these places arrive with lots of poverty and the consequences and the violence associated with it, religious as well as political repression. I mean, imagine what is going on in Afghanistan now. How is the youth there? What about Yemen? What about Eastern Ukraine? Some parts of Northern Nigeria, and so on and so forth. And there are young people growing up in that place. And it's not as if it's that easy growing up by in, in, in his. I mean, we know the task that children need to go through in adolescence in order to, to, to go through that rite of passage and become viable adults hormonal changes, psychosocial changes, expansion of your mind. Suddenly you realize sometimes that your parents are not always right and they don't know. And you become so smart, maybe as smart as your parents, if not smarter, but the wisdom might not be there to handle this issue. So this leads to a lot of another authority figures and with good and bad consequences. But young people still have to go through those phases to go through the phase we call individuation in order to become independent and productive adults, rather than just being a, a, an extension or like, 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 like an extension of their parents, their mom, or their dad. All these have in, in impact on the stability of the young people, on their integrity, and the, and the solidity by which they can project themselves into the future as good people. But my compensation is that as children of God, we have Christ as our model. He's the author and the finisher. And I believe that if we study the word of God, and if you have not been doing that, you need to go back to the word of God, studying the word of God. I look at the life and that of King Solomon. And I see a lot of life experiences and examples there. The intention that King Solomon has in his head, when God gave him a blank check, he said, my son, Solomon, your dad was my 
And here I am. I promised him that I would look after you. Tell me your son. What can I do for you? What do you want? And you see how God was so taken aback and impressed by his response. He did not ask for his own personal gain. I can imagine what I will ask for, what many of us will ask for here, seeking all these rich things, you know. But Solomon just asked for wisdom to add people. He has that selfless, clean, and integrity in his heart that was so impressed, that God was so impressed that he then gave him everything. What? With a clean heart. With a clean purpose. If you integrity and the intention for the greater good you will present yourself as not being better than a con man. And all this influence here for the game to gain wealth empire. That what you are there for. So remember who you represent and what is your aim. You want to influence people to come to Christ. So you yourself must be able to demonstrate that Christ-like life and the integrity that goes with it, the consistency. Dr. Victor has emphasized, and I pray that as you do that, 